respected Andy enough when he played against me. I always felt such an open match. It was never safe. Uh, with that kind of serve, with that kind of a championship mentality, I always knew I was in danger. Um, even though I had that incredible streak against him, I, I can't believe how good it actually was now over the years. But uh, if you look back at all the results, there's maybe a few one-sided, but I guess that's normal when you play 25 times. You can't play three setters every single time. But I knew I was in for a battle, and uh, that's what Andy did to you every time, because you knew once you stepped on the court, you're going to have a tough match, and that's, that's what champions do. And we talk about Wimbledon 09 so often, it's such a great match. When you reflect back on the 77 games, and 16, 14, and the fifth set, what do you recall from that day and the essence of that competition? Well, I mean, that, that match, uh, I, I came in as a, as a big favorite. I just won the, uh, I mean, big favorite. I came in as a, a good chance to win because I think I just won the French Open that, uh, and I tied. Uh, I got tied Pete for the team of people sitting in the crowd here for, for this one. And I, I couldn't break Andy, I don't think, for the first, well, until the last game of the match, I believe. So I really felt it was extremely difficult to come through. And at the end, I mean, it was just a bit of luck. And here you go, he shanks his forehand, and then things were over all of a sudden. But, uh, I recall just uh, for me an epic, an epic win, the back-to-back French Open in the time in front of the eyes of Pete Sampras against a great uh, friend and champion, Andy Roy. I think also because Andy's announcement today took us all a bit by surprise, and it really goes to show, and we talk so much about the way you enjoy the game, and you get onto the court, and you right. enjoy every moment that you have, how small the window is for all athletes, but especially yeah. for tennis players as well. You have maybe 10 years or 12 years to be the best you can possibly be. Is that part of the reason why you go out there and make the most of it every time? I think so. I mean, I think the first five years or so, you just really try to break through. You try to get comfortable on the um, really on tour, get friends, you know, start to understand how does the tour really work, which places do I enjoy to play better on, uh, which surfaces do I like, all that stuff. The next phase, all of a sudden, you're already looking at the back end of your career, really. Yeah. So that this is where you can make the most out of it. How enjoyable can you make it on tour for yourself, really? Um, how you set up your practice sessions, you know, who do you surround yourself with, and uh, I thought that Andy always had a, a nice group of guys around him as well, I think, which made it nice and fun for him on tour, but I, I mean, he's, he's ready to move on, and I always respect that, this, to make that decision, it's a tough one, but when I saw his uh, face today, and he looked me in the eyes, I said, you know what, I'm done, and I'm like, wow, I mean, you feel so happy about it, and I'm so happy he feels that way, because then people are going to go like, oh my god, it's so sad, should be so celebration, right, should be happy. And that's what I was in the, in the first instance with, with Andy tonight. I only have 45 seconds, but he turned 30. Right. Since age 30, he's won nine titles. You have a great chance at another slam and an 18 slam. What's the essential, the key ingredient to the hunger and the desire to keep playing well at this point for you? Well, I guess you've got to have that balance, you know, between fire and being relaxed and knowing where you are in your life. It's, it's not an easy one to sometimes... Uh, Faced, and obviously the physical element comes to it, and then the whole, whole traveling. I mean, Andy could play for another five years and be ranked inside of the top 100, but it's about wanting to lift trophies, wanting to beat the best, and that grind takes its toll eventually. And uh, I think that's where Andy is right now. He's not, uh, he can't win a tennis match anymore, otherwise he would not be playing at the US Open. He might still have the chance to win the US Open, so uh, I hope it goes well for him tomorrow. Yeah, you said uh, in the interview before when you uh, were in the tunnel and talking to Tom Rinaldi, you hope Andy has the best US Open he's ever had. And right. I said right after you said that, until you meet him in the finals. Let's focus on Andy, not on me, for tonight. But a uh, very classy. And when, when you're in a match like you were tonight, as we're waiting for the players, once you, you're up a couple of sets, it's in great hands. What keeps you focused? What keeps you sharp as you continue to work on your best form going forward? So, uh, I listen to the music on the change of and I see the guy dancing in the stands, that's what I see. You saw a guy and the one that they Exactly, totally. And then I come out and I, I don't know, I hit a serve, I don't know, 10 feet long, and I'm like, my focus is gone. So my focus also comes in and out at times. I mean, we have a lot of dead moments out on the, on the court as well, so our mind starts wandering in a big way as well. Andy's announcement sort of shapes, or changes the shape of tomorrow's match as well, because it goes from sort of looking at Andy's game and seeing where improvements can come and being a little analytical about that match. Now it's just a celebration. We go out there, we hope for the best. It's sort of an Andre moment that you're looking for. Right. He finished in 2006. He played those two matches against Pavel and Baghdadis. Right. He remembers that Baghdadis match as one of the best moments of his career. You want that for Andy tomorrow night. Exactly. Win or lose. Win or lose, yes. It'd be nice if he won. So then, yeah, obviously, it's, it goes into Labor Day weekend, and there's a huge excitement around that as well. I, I mean, look, I don't think there's any wrongdoing if how you pull out. I 
full, full out of the game, really. So I think it was uh, secure how we felt, you know, making the announcement, doing a press conference the day before the match tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a, a tough match tomorrow night, yep. one uh, that's going to be enjoyable for, for him and for Tomic and for the crowd. And I hope he takes the most out of it and enjoys it as much as he can, smiles and I mean, goes out and gives it all he has. And that's anyway given with, with Andy, so well, I'm looking forward to it. As always, we appreciate the quality of your game as much as the quality of your conversation and respect for others. Thank you. All right, my pleasure. Roger Federer moving on.